Hi, Julie Matthews here with Hudson County TV. Today we met with Carmelo Garcia to discuss the judge's verdict about him running for state assembly. Here's what Garcia had to say. Mr. Garcia, congratulations on winning the vote and moving forward with Vision 2020. Can you tell me a little bit about what the key elements were in choosing the qualified developer? Well, it's been a long road and I think that the five key considerations was the management rights, that the residents, we promised we would honor us being the property maintenance and property manager for the new development. Uh, secondly, it was the developer fee, ensuring that we get a 50-50 split. Also, we have the cash flow split at 50-50 and then 75-25 once the project is complete. Job creation, which is really big for us, so they will be creating jobs for our residents and training them, giving them trades to become successful and be self-sufficient. And lastly, resident services, where they will be uh, donating uh, to our resident services program to assist us in fulfilling that self-sufficiency goal, which is very critical to the success of this project and of our residents. Excellent. And tell me about why this project is so important to you on a personal level. Personally, I grew up in the Hoboken Housing Authority and it was, uh, I call it, ghetto to glory. So for me, it was always a dream to come back and be the executive director of the Housing Authority solely because I always felt that there had to be a better way to live. I vowed that no child should see what I saw growing up. I mean, and the conditions back then were very horrible as far as the mismanagement, the neglect, maintenance, neglect, you had it all the way around. So today, to see us reach a point in, in a great milestone that we can have a rebirth for this community and give the families housing that they're deserving of, where it's ADA compliant, enough ventilation, light and air, and modernized, I mean, elevated above the new uh, FEMA floodplain, whereas you know, we'll have an anti-Sandy or Sandy proof design. And personally, the road that we've taken here has been one of true resilience, resolve, and quite frankly, just love for the residents that I serve. And for the residents that are adamant against you holding both positions, what is what do you think that are some of the reasons that people are opposed to you moving into the assembly position? I believe there's a great disenfranchisement for to the voters of the great 33rd district. I think the folks who don't know me uh, have judged me and not realizing that there are a lot of factors as to why uh, the voters of this 33rd district, the people that I serve, believe in my uh, hard work, believe in my drive to basically make a difference, be a game changer. So those individuals, again, it's just a, a shame that they would use uh, that process to try to disenfranchise voters. And also I think that it has a lot to do with probably, uh, you know, classism, you know, who knows, prejudice that, you know, comes into play at times with respect to just not knowing about my background, what I stand for, and the fact that as a Latino and a minority, I would be representing a great portion of this uh, district, as well as within the state, of a group that is underrepresented. So I think there's a strong value. I'm, I'm not just an individual who's born and raised here and who is just successful in doing what I've done because uh, I didn't work hard for it. I mean, nothing has been given to me. The bottom line is that I can truly champion and represent a cause in the legislature for all the people. I'm a boundary crosser. I just so happen to be Latino, but I'm a young, educated professional as well. And clearly, as a public servant, I have a solid track record in delivering results. And I think some folks just haven't gotten the chance to know me and to really understand that I'm not looking, there's no double dipping because I can't get a second pension. I don't get any health benefits. I would give 50% of that salary to charities and to scholarships that I offer on an annual basis. So therefore, for me, I personally feel I've served the Board of Education for 11 years. It's a natural progression to go up to the state legislature. And I was honored to be selected by Senator Stack and universally agreed upon by all the leaders in Hudson County. So I think it speaks volume of my commitment and of my uh, success. How would you respond to the statement that using that act, people are claiming, quote, you're exploiting a loophole for personal and financial gain? <laughs> wow, that was, <laughs> I, I personally, uh, Don't yeah, I, I think that that is, um, it's a shame that anyone would say that because if you look at my track record, I mean, it almost seems that I'm not allowed, I guess, to uh, run for a higher office to serve the people. I mean, it, it disenfranchises the people that want me to serve their interests and to represent them at the state. So I, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm troubled by that. I think that in the 
age we're in, 2013, people should not be judging someone assuming that it's for personal financial gain. When I've said that, if anything, 50% of any thing that I would be receiving would go to charity and the scholarships that I offer already. So at the end of the day, here I am, I volunteered to do a job, and now because you're getting paid to do another one, but it's one more of policy making at the state level, which can represent the interests of the taxpayers, represents my interests and those that basically, my interests as a taxpayer as well. So I know how to fight the good fight, and I will fight on to represent that interest of all the citizens, you know, whether it be here that I'm deeply committed to my residents in the housing authority or out there to the greater 33rd district within the state. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, why would anyone think that if you choose to run for office, you put yourself under great scrutiny, you're under the microscope. Why would anyone want to do that if they weren't doing it with an altruistic interest? Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. You, you know, I've lived my life as an open book, so why would I care about those opinions of others that are not my reality? I don't care about the opinions of others that are not my reality. What I do care about deeply is the ability that is afforded to me to make a difference in this society, in this community, and in the 33rd district. That's all I was aiming for. That's all my pursuit was. So, I don't know. If people want to prejudge me and think that that's the case, I'll never change their minds. But for those who don't know me and want to really have an opportunity to sit and learn from me, I'd be more than happy at any time to meet with any individual. In your commitment to the Housing Authority, how would you balance both roles if you were, if you were able to move forward? That's a great question. I normally work 19, 20 hours out of the day. I mean, since college, I've programmed program myself to kind of operate on five hours sleep. So for me, I would be able to manage both of them by simply being a great uh, time management, you know, king as I, I look at it, right? I mean, it's what it's all about, right? You have your normal hours of work and then you incorporate everything in between it. My quality of life would not be changed if my family is supportive of it, which they are, and everyone along the lines that I have spoken to, then it would be a, a great balance where simply, you know what, housing authority is always first and foremost, and that becomes the part-time yet full-time at times, but it's your secondary, and I think that it can be manageable if you know how to master the art and science of time management. Since the last uh, and most recent Housing Authority meeting, we have seen an act of violence on a young mother and also a drug-related death. What are your plans to increase security for the housing projects? First of all, it was myself who reported that uh, crime to the police department, the one with the young mother who was assaulted. Uh, my plans presently are, I reached out to the chief and public safety director. I think it's evident that the city needs to hire more full-time police officers. We do have our housing bureau that works from 8 at night to 4 in the morning. And we have police officers who live in the buildings where we're doing some sting operations. We're working with our narcotics division. We have a full all-out uh, all assault uh, action plan to address these issues. But again, remember policing and security not within the hours of 8 to 4 in the morning have everything to do with what the city provides us as a part of the community. So we don't have any special forces or police officers during the day that are assigned to the housing authority, but in the evening, from 8 at night to 4 in the morning, we do have our own bureau. And we do have our police officers that I've brought in through the Officer Next Door program that reside in the buildings who are doing their own vertical sweeps to ensure that the buildings are secure. We're targeting those buildings, which we've had random acts of criminality, and that's what you have is random acts because a lot of those things probably we couldn't have avoided given the circumstances that were prevalent. But I have spoken to the chief, I've spoken to the public safety director, we have a meeting. Next week we have a public safety meeting with all of our residents. And again, we're doing our part, but security, policing is really an act and a job of the police department. Mr. Garcia, thank you so much for your time. Good luck with your appeal. We look forward to hearing about your future successes. Thank you to Hudson County TV. As always, it's a great experience. I do appreciate all that you do in order to get uh, this information out to your viewers. Uh, really excited to be a part of this movement, and I thank you tremendously.